It is morning. Uh, today is day 32, 100 days, 100 videos, 200 questions, and I have a little bit of a correction from yesterday from when I was talking about about creativity versus clarity, and I said clarity was more important. And I'm going to just give a little bit of an explanation why I think it's more important, and that's because for me, I have more trouble making sure that I'm being clear than I have being creative. So it's something that is more on the forefront of my mind as something I need to check for. Creativity comes much more naturally and clarity, I can get lost in the weeds of, of being clear for the sake of creativity. So that's my little clear, that's my little um, correction, I guess. Uh, the editor's note, I am the editor. Uh, I just want to talk. I don't know if I've talked about this yet or not, but you can see I have mega desks here because I have this puzzle back here. Oh, I thought there was a piece. It's the $2 million puzzle by Mischief. And it is the hardest freaking puzzle I've ever done. Granted, I've never done that one where like it's entirely white. Um, but this one, like the pieces are so close to fitting and you have to like Look and be like, oh, that yellow was slightly off. Or the edge pieces are slightly off. It is the absolute, it is the worst. But it expires on like, like I, it's like a, it ends up being a QR code and then you could win $2 million is the whole thing. But it expires on the end of February. And so I need to get it done and it's taking me forever. So you'll see that in the background of my videos for the next weeks until I freaking finish it. Because it's driving me insane. I don't even know how many pieces it is. I don't think it says. I have no idea. Anyway, let's get let's move on. Let's get this out of the way. It's it's a day. Let's see what we got today. Is this one? Yes, it is. Today's question is: How do you integrate user feedback into your copywriting process? Here's a note for any aspiring copywriter who maybe hasn't gotten their foot in the game yet, in the door, mixing my metaphors. Um, feedback is the most valuable thing you can get. Like real time feedback. And by real time, I mean from a person that's been there before. So if you can find a copywriter that doesn't even have to be an A-lister or someone who's done millions of billions of dollars in sales from their copy, it can be someone who's just, you know, slightly ahead of the game for you and getting their eyes on your copy will make it so much better, so much faster than like handwriting or uh, reading books, just because it's a little painful, right? Getting criticized for something that you've created, it can be painful, but it's, it's also valuable because you're going to remember it so much better when you have real people telling you, hey, this is throat clearing. You need to cut this whole thing out. This part isn't clear. You're using exclamation points too much. All these things mean more when it's coming as like a criticism uh, for your creation. Um, but it's like a constructive criticism. I love getting feedback. I hope they rip it apart because that's going to make me stronger. And I know as a marketer that I need to hear something. It used to be seven times. Now I'm hearing it's like closer to 20 times before it gets in my little brain. So I need to hear it more. So I'm always looking for feedback for people to tell me when stuff is garbage or even like garbage adjacent or even success adjacent. Tell me what I need to do to make it a success. That's valuable to me. All right, let's get a new question. My keyboard is always turned off. <laughs> I have to just hit it for a while. All right. Okay, let's see. How did you identify the need your business addresses and what was the moment you realized you could make a difference in this area? Um, so I was, the moment I realized, let me go back. So I'm going to tell you what I do. I am a direct response, and I should put that in quotes, and I will explain why later, copywriter who focuses on helping established business, businesses market to women. And this comes in sort of two ways. It, it can either be 
an established business who already is successfully marketing to men, but they want to expand their audience to include women because they have a product that will help them, and but their current copy is not translating to a more feminine audience, so I can come in there and I can help them. Or they have a product that's already geared to women, but it's not converting at the level they want, and they're not sure where they're missing the mark. And I can come in and help them. So those are the two groups of businesses that I help. Uh, the biggest thing for me is that I have to help a business that will actually help women, that will actually improve the lives of women one way or the other, whether it be, you know, skincare, uh, mindset, parenting, um, supplements, a course. It doesn't matter. Like, I just have to believe in my heart that this is a business that is, is actually helping women and it's not something where it's like, I want to dupe women so I can make the most money possible. Um, so that's important to me. But so how did I identify myself in this sort of like niche of the writing for women, which means I, I write for men most of the time, which I love. I love writing for men. I love working with men. Um, I like the bros. I come from corporate finance, so I'm very familiar with being in that sort of like bro environment. It doesn't, doesn't really bother me. Um, I think I have sort of a masculine energy, so it works. Um, so I identified this business need when I was writing a nothing held back job po board post. And I that's when I realized like this is what I offer that a lot of people don't offer is my ability to translate from bro to lady. I almost went full bro there, and you can imagine what I was going to say. It was like going back to the college days. <laughs> um, sorry, that's just who I am. I fit in with the bros. Um, and just through writing it, I realized that I could make a difference. I write a lot. Like I, One of my best voices is the mom voice, and I am a mom. I've got two kids, uh, but like I just, I feel the mom I just, I, it's, I feel it in my bones and that's, that's, I'm, I should be a mommy blogger. I'd be great. Maybe. Um, yeah, that's just recognizing how many people needed this has really showed me. And I'm trying to get better because there are other, there are other copywriters out there who do this. Um, and I want to work with them, you know, I want to create a whole like agency of just women crushing copywriting. Um, Oh, but I do want to say, when I say direct response, I have learned in all my time that women do not always respond to the direct response sort of framework. And if you are not willing to step outside of those rules, of those formulas, that's where you're going to sort of limit your audience when it comes to women. So that's why I say direct response, because I am a direct response copywriter. That's how I was trained. Uh, but I have found my little sort of side quests <laughs> how, to, how to how to manipulate to work for me all right this was day 32 am i at 32 100 days 100 videos 200 questions um thanks so much for watching i don't got much to say still not doing subtitles haven't figured out how to do it yet um have a great day and i will see you tomorrow for when we're a third of the way through yeah bye